Time for another DF4Q or Discover Film 4 Questions. Lightning fast, the Discover Film 4 Questions are favorite film, an underrated film, an overrated film, and a hidden gem that people should seek out. Today we hear Dylan Sanford's answers to the DF4Q. Dylan made a great short film called An Entanglement. We've got it at discoverfilm.net for you to watch right now. But enough setup. Let's hear Dylan's answers to the DF4Q. Top three, right? Yeah, Someone yeah. did yeah. five. Okay. All right. Well, and, and I, you know, of course, being asked to, like, pick your, your favorite films or whatever is, uh, I mean, it's just impossible. Um, Very you can't, tough. You can't narrow it down. So I just tried to think of, of the first three that popped into my head um, as favorites of mine. So um, one of them is Petulia. Um, Petulia is probably... Um, could probably also fall under the category of a film that not a lot of people have seen. Yeah, the end. Yeah, but, it, um, that's my head gesture. Yeah. Is the I don't know that one yes, gesture. Yeah, yeah. And um, but it's a movie that everybody should know. Um, it's uh, yeah, Richard Lester directed it. Um, Richard Lester did Hard Day's Night, and Superman movies, and um, you know uh, has has a, a very impressive um, film history, um, and arguably is partially responsible for visual film language for modern movies as we know it. Um, you know, Hard Day's Night and Help, I mean, those those really have kind of changed the way that... They changed the world. Yeah, cinema language works. Um, Petulia, so it's it's uh, 1967. Um, well, uh, it's 68, I think it came out in. Um, but it takes place during the Summer of Love in San Francisco. Um, stars Julie Christie... And um, George C. Scott and Richard Chamberlain, amazing cast, extraordinary movie, kind of about the, uh, I don't know, it just has this kind of wisdom to it about the budding, budding up of this, uh, the, the youth generation and the, the kind of hopefulness and the vitality of the youth um, budding up against the old guard and what both of them have wrong about it, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, and it's, it's, so it's just a stunning, stunning movie. Um, always one of my favorites. I, every time I see it, I kind of see something new. Um, I was having a tough time coming up. With, like, uh, one of the other ones that popped up is the party. Um, Peter Sellers, Peter Sellers. Yeah. Blake Edwards. Sure. Um, that also ironically, 1968, um, I just love that movie, you know. It, it, it's, it's that's interesting because it's thoroughly silly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And completely silly. And you but, actually don't strike me as a silly guy, oh, really? but I like yeah, that yeah. you appreciate no, the silly. It's just extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, anybody who watches that movie, watch that film, and take note of how effortless they capture physical comedy playing out in single shots. Um, just with such dexterity and I mean, they don't make comedies like that anymore. No, no, no. They just It's a don't. masterpiece. They made masterpieces. Yeah. yeah. Did you love his appearance at the Oscars when they gave him the lifetime achievement oh, yeah. award and yeah, he yeah. Was, came out in the wheelchair yeah. and then it shot into yeah. a wall? Yeah. My God, he even, yeah. he even did a, a yeah. piece, a comedy piece with that. Yeah. No, but just, just stunning. And, and that, you know, there's probably a lot of that film that doesn't necessarily hold up to the, um, uh, you know, like, the aesthetic of the day, the well, no, the, the, the political correctness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of uh, of it that could be read uh, with with slightly more critical eyes now when, yeah. when it comes to race. Um, My best um, friend I grew up with is yeah. is Indian, yeah. and he loves the movie yeah. a little more than I do. Okay, and, like I, we're the type of well, people that enough. that good we enough. went we went you know when it shows it at the Egyptian we would yeah. go. Oh, I just love that film. That's an amazing movie. Um, and then two thousand and one. Um, pops up in my head. I, are they, there's obviously there's so many more on the, on the list, but, um, but 2001 is another one of those that I, Kubrick, I love and, and, um, and in general his films, but especially that film, every time I see it, I notice something different. Um, I notice, uh, something that I hadn't noticed on the viewing before. And in my mind, that's, you know, that's great filmmaking. If you can, if you can load it, with so much and yet not make it feel overburdened. That's a, that's an extraordinary achievement. Yeah. Um, it's an, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so those are like my, my three favorites. 
Um, underrated? Is that the next one? Yeah, this, the next one is a film you think is underrated. Underrated. Um, uh, underrated potentially only because I don't think a lot of people saw it. Um, is uh, Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. Um, There's my shrug again. Ang Lee m- made it a couple years ago. Um, it's uh, It follows a um, veteran coming home from Iraq. I think it got buried. They shot it in... F- 3D, stereo, 4K, 120 frames per second. It got buried in that as as a gimmick. Um, and I right. think everybody, anybody who then was going to see it was expecting to see a spectacle, some kind of effects spectacle. And it's the absolute opposite of that. It's a very Ang Lee personal story uh, following these this character drama. Um, it's very kind of insular. Um, so shooting it in that. Yeah. Interesting choice that, yeah, I mean, I love, I love those high frame rate. Yeah. Films. He, his, his purpose, I guess, in it was that there was an immersiveness to it that he wanted to exploit. But, um, but it's, um, it's definitely, uh, I think that, I think that was, I think that worked against it because I think. They or maybe didn't. he just believes that's the future. Maybe he <laughs> maybe, believes yeah. that all films should yeah. be shot at high frame. Possibly, rate. possibly, but because there is it should be. But there is something that's really interesting when you see it, um, and I and I hope that that you see it. Um, there is something that's really interesting and odd about how it's handled, and it, it there is an immersiveness to it. It is almost the only thing I could liken it to is if Ang Lee had directed a video game, um, so that the characters are also kind of talking to you, if that makes sense. Some of how they shoot it makes it feel as though you are almost first person. You are a character. Yeah. Yeah. And the emotional effect of it is very odd in the the setting of that story, but it works in an amazing way. I mean, it's just a, it's, it's an extraordinary comment on combat and, um, veterans and, and how we treat our veterans and what, what we, what the stakes and what the toll of that is on, on, on generations of, of kids basically. Um, and it's, uh, and it does that without feeling even once preachy. It never feels like you're, you're getting a, a scolding. Um, and that, that's just, I think it's just amazing. Sounds um, great. Yeah. So you've already gotten two in the first two questions that could have been number four. I know. How about that? Yeah. But so, so I'm we're looking, just gonna forward, get I'm looking of, forward to yeah. your number four. Yeah. We're just going to get course, further off. Number three is, is where you get to do, yeah. uh, I sometimes joke about it being the player hating question, but, right. but what film does everybody like that you think yeah. is overrated? Yeah. And of course that's, that's the one that, that could of course incite the, the biggest, uh, the greatest vitriol I'm sure, because you know, it's the one that everybody accepts is great. Um, and that was tough. I was trying to think about that. Um, I vacillated a little bit. I, I said, I said, uh, you know, force awakens was one of them. Sure. Um, which certainly felt if it was, Um, yeah, if, and um, the only argument against force awakens being overrated is a lot of people said it was flawed. Right. And, exactly. And so, so that was why I kind of removed that. I thought, well, now I should come up with it with one that's like, really generally regarded as a, as a great film. Um, Logan, I didn't love. Um, and I know a lot of people really loved that film. Um, I thought there was a lot in it that was great, but I thought that if you extracted, if you extracted his performance from it and put anybody else in it, that movie would just completely fall apart like a house of cards. Um, and I, think that that then right there shows that it's probably a little overrated, like that it's so contingent upon his performance, right? He's just Patrick Stewart's performance, you know, those that's so critical to the success of that movie. And if you put those lines in a lesser actor's mouth, they just turn into gobbledygook, I think. Well, maybe he's, a, maybe he soaked up the whole budget and they had no money left over for anything <laughs> but his performance. You yeah, know. yeah. But uh, so that's the, I'll, I'll say Logan is my uh, you know that's my right. Logan with with the, with the Force Awakens in parentheses. Yeah, as a, as a, parent, a parenthetical because you know I know that a lot of people do have some some 
um, criticism of that. I'll tell you mine after we uh, finish curious, after yeah. after we hit the space bar. Yeah. All right. Well, what's your fourth? Your uh, that lesser known film that people should right? seek out. Yeah. Although you've already given me two. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, I had two. I had two on this list too, actually. So um, one of them is the jacket, which um, Adrian Brody, Kira Knightley. Um, really? Okay. Uh, Chris Christopherson. Amazing, amazing psychological thriller. I, I, I w- it, it almost defies classification. Really, really, really solid film um, that um, n- nobody saw. <laughs> and I, I don't know why nobody saw it because it's, you know, it's got headliners. I, it's you got, know, I don't know what happened to Brody. Um, Adrian yeah, Brody, yeah. people, the audience was, was turned on him and he still does great stuff. And that was after his Oscar win. Like, yeah. So it, it should have been box office success, but... I don't know. It couldn't couldn't find its mark. So um, that was one. And then um, another one that that came to mind as as one that not a lot of people have seen is um, the Chum Scrubber. I love that film. Yeah. And oh, uh, that's so great. And I was and I was just stunned by that movie. I thought, wow, what a what an impressive. And that was his first film too. That was uh, that guy's first film. Um, and I thought, wow, what a what an impressive first film to, to drop. Um, and, uh, and to nail high school so well. Yeah. Yeah. And Jamie Bell is so great in it. And I mean, everybody, everybody is so good in it and, and there's humor, but it's, you know, it's also got the, 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 the weight of it. And I just, I was really impressed by that film and I don't know why anybody, like there's so many people that didn't see that movie. Yeah. That should be a household name kind yeah. of film. That should be, you should be able to say to anybody yeah. chum scrubber and have everyone go, have Oh, you, that's a great oh, movie. Oh yeah. I love that movie. You know? yeah. And so few people have seen it. I think I'm I only saw it because it popped up on HBO once. I don't okay. even think yeah. I sought it out. Yeah. I definitely missed it when it was theatrical. Yeah. It's a great picture. Love that movie. Oh, it's so good. But, um, but yeah, so those, those, those are my, uh, undiscovered. Although, like you say, some of my other ones fit in yeah well i didn't know one of your best of all time yeah, Petulia, and, yet, yeah. and yet i knew you're a rare yeah. rare one but Petulia, you, you got to uh you got to check out that's an amazing picture excellent all right well thanks for taking part yeah, thank thanks, you thanks for coming in and thank you and talking film for, happy to participate for a while. anytime i love film it finally happened again one of the filmmakers in their df4q named one of my favorite films of all time as one of theirs funny part is this was about 2001 and after the podcast dylan and i were talking on our way to the door and i told him how one of mine is 2001 and that i debate between strange love and 2001 making the list and he told me he has the same debate do you go with strange love or 2001 for your kubrick i think we all have to deal with that choice and i'm starting to think it really has to be strange love instead of 2001 but i think that debate can wait all right, go to discoverfilm.net to see Dylan's fantastic movie and entanglement. Also go to discoverfilm.net to see other films and learn about film festivals and whatnot. Thanks for listening. Yeah.